today's hearing is uh, a testament Hank, Hank, could to you your, pull your microphone a little closer? Thank you. I'm sorry. Today's hearing uh, is a testament to your leadership and focuses upon issues that are protected by our Constitution and fundamental to the ability of American companies and inventors to remain competitive in the global marketplace. Under you, Secretary Lee, um, I want to commend you for the improvements that you and your team have made to the Patent and Trademark Office. The PTO was ranked as the best place to work in the federal government in 2013, and you have diligently worked to not only cut costs in, uh, in this post-sequestration environment, but also to improve internal processes so that the patent backlog can be addressed. Despite these improvements, however, there are still some concerns overshadowing the Patent Office's success that deal with patent quality and diversity. The PTO was once criticized and faced litigation for alleged discriminatory practices in its hiring and promotion of patent examiners, especially against African American women. How has the telework program increased, increased the U.S. PTO's ability to recruit and return and retain high-skilled examiners from diverse backgrounds? Thank you very much, uh, Congressman, for that question. And I have the privilege of serving as the first woman head of the United States Patent and Trademark Office in our country's history, and it is a tremendous honor and privilege. And one of my very big initiatives is to make sure that we are recruiting and retaining the top technical talent that we can get, the top talent across the board, technical and non-technical, across all demographics. and. We have mentoring programs. I have the uh, Office of Equal Opportunity, Equal Employment Opportunity uh, Director reporting directly to me, providing me with information on our programs to retain our very critical talent and to recruit very diverse talent. It's an issue that I care deeply about, not only within the PTO, and I might add that within the PTO, we have more women executives than, dare I say, the average in the private sector, and we are looking to recruit and retain more candidates of diverse candidates uh, of diverse backgrounds into every level of the Patent and Trademark Office and externally outside the Patent and Trademark Office. One of the issues that I found when I asked the question is that about 15 percent of the U.S. based inventors that were listed on the patents were women and we haven't we'd like to see more and we'd like to see uh, individuals from diverse backgrounds taking advantage of programs that we create like Camp Invention where we bring elementary school age kids to the camp. They have a, it's a one week summer enrichment program. They learn a little bit about making, designing, building, prototyping, a little bit about intellectual property and we give special scholarships working with Invent Now uh, as our partner in this to kids from underprivileged backgrounds. Why? Because we can't afford to leave behind any inventor or any potential future entrepreneur. It's that important to our country's future success. Mm -hmm. What's the name of that program? It's Camp Invention, and actually that is just one of the many initiatives we have to encourage uh, all of our citizens to be excited about invention. I would like nothing more than for all of our children across all demographics, across all geographic regions of this great country of ours to, to want to grow up to be inventors and to want to be entrepreneurs. So I can get you a whole long list on issues that we're very proud of, but that there's a lot more work to be done on in terms of expanding the diversity both uh, you know, in terms of our inventor and applicant base, but also within the agency itself. All right, that will be great. I'd look forward to my fellow members of the Congressional Black Caucus uh, being able to uh, know about uh, Camp Invention and participate in it. Uh, as mentioned in the 2016 GAO report on patent examiners, has the USPTO conducted an overall analysis of its examiners, of their skill, of their technical competency to identify potential gaps in technical skills? And if so, what steps have you taken to address these gaps? So we have taken steps to identify uh, gaps in the skill sets of our examiners. What we do is uh, we, when we make new hirings, hiring decisions, we tend to try to fill the gaps that we have. And also, with our existing employee base, we work very hard to continue to provide them technical and legal training as the case law develops which it, and changes, which it inevitably does, and importantly, as technology changes. We have a program where we pay for our examiners to go back to get technical education in new areas of the technology so that they are examining and they know how to examine at the state-of-the-art level in these whole range of new technology areas that 
we're all hearing so much about. Also, um, we have a patent examiner training program where we work with the private sector and academics where they volunteer to provide time and they come to the patent and trademark office or they come to our regional offices and they give a lecture on their area of expertise and we can then uh, televise that uh, across all of our examination core uh, so that everybody who is examining that area has the benefit of that educational training. It's provided for free, it makes perfect sense. These people are in the industry, they have the state of the art knowledge and expertise, the technology changes quickly. Um, so it, we train and keep our examiners at the top level of technical expertise through any number of these initiatives, and we're always looking to do more, and the public has helped us keep them up to date on the technologies, and we're very appreciative of that. Thank you, and um, Thank Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. We now go to the gentleman from Ohio uh, for his round of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Madam Director, this past June, the uh, GAO found uh, that primary examiners have the least amount of time